Before the video starts, and I get zero comments about this because no one watches my videos, but even if I did get a comment about it, don't, don't comment it because I'm addressing it now. I apologize that the video is in like up and down format instead of like horizontal is vertical. I did not mean for that to happen and it's kind of too late to like redo the whole thing. So in the future, it's going to be horizontal. But for this video, you're just going to have to suffer through vertical format. So it sucks. Please, please still watch, please. This is a custom keyboard from Timu.com. I got it for $18, and as you can probably see and hear, it does not sound very good at all. <laughs> make it stop! Oh, make it stop! What we are going to be doing today is trying to mount. Without further ado, let's get started. That little intro, we're going to try to either foam mod it. Uh, I have multiple types of foam, see if any of these will fit. Little foreshadow for later in the video. None of that foam would fit. The case is just absolutely terrible. Just wait, you'll see it is so bad. You just just wait. Pretty thick. I have some tape. Some new switches. Spoiler alert, we won't even be able to use those switches because they are Gataron Oil Kings. And if you know about Gataron Oil Kings, you will know they are five pin switches. And the PCB we got with our $18 keyboard is so terrible. It only supports three pin switches, which is just wonderful. More of my money down the drain. Yeah, baby! And some new keycaps. Unfortunately, I do not have any extra stabilizers today, so we are going to have to work with the stabilizers they provide. Now, let's get started on this thing. They did say it was hot swap, and as you can see, it comes with Cherry MX Blues. Not my favorite switch, as I'm not a fan of tactile. Not to mention, the sound they make is just terrible. I will speed this up in editing for you guys so you guys do not have to see. In fact, let me do a little bit of magic. Alrighty, now that you've seen that, we are officially done putting the keycaps in. A nice little trick, I know. Wait till you see the next one. Now we have to remove all of these disgusting, disgusting MX Blues. Not really looking forward to it either, to be honest. Also, I'm kind of out of containers, so that's not great for me. I have nowhere to put these blues, and they are really, really not wanting to be removed right now, are they? Um, let me look for a better switch puller for y'all. Not sponsored or anything, but this guy to run switch puller, V2, is the greatest switch puller I've ever seen. And even it won't remove these. Damn. Maybe they lied about being hot swap. Give us just a moment. Alrighty, as you can see, we have removed two and discovered it is hot swap. It's just a terrible keyboard. Now I think it's probably time for a little bit more magic. Alrighty, so after taking out all of the switches, which are knockoff Cherry MX Blues, who could have guessed? We, re we realized that this PCB does not support 5-pin switches, which is a bad thing for us because we do not have any 3-pin switches besides these broken knockoff Cherry MX Blues. That is correct, the plastic cracked every single time I tried to remove one. Not very good. Here we can see that it would be possible to foam mod, albeit extremely hard. Uh, don't know if we're actually going to, because it'd be super hard. Same with tape modding. Definitely could be done. Uh, very difficult though. So what we are going to do at this very moment is crack out the old MacBook. And we're gonna try to buy ourselves some cheap, 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 very cheap. I do not think you guys understand exactly how cheap I mean. Three pin switches. Also, y'all, just for some context, the switches we decided to get for this thing right here to make it actually like sound good and transform the $18 keyboard is Akko Cream Yellow V3 switches, I believe. 
They are three pin switches. We are getting them hand lubed. Uh, I don't want to do it. So I'm paying someone to do it. They're going to hand lube all the switches. Uh, donut dip the springs and bag lube the springs. So they're going to sound hopefully really good. But yeah, Echo Cream Yellow V3. All right, guys. Now that that order has been placed, we can get started uh, attempting to foam mod whatever the hell this is. First, here, let's get my pocket knife. Do not recommend doing this. This is very dangerous. So I'm going to be honest with you. Don't recommend it. Um, I feel like the only way I could even do this is like... Because that's so bad. Why are there... I feel like I'd have to like cut outlines, wouldn't I? Yeah, I don't know how I would do this, really. I don't. Um... Also, terrible clip-in stabilizers, who could have guessed? I'll be right back when I figure out a way to foam this. After some thinking, I was able to foam mod the keyboard case. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Get your ass on, bro. Now, what we must try to do is tape mod the PCB, which I do not think is going to go much, if not any better, than it was to foam mod the keyboard case. But we can give it a try. It's really weird with these like pins sticking out in the back. This definitely is not a keyboard I would recommend getting. Um, we are getting the Echo Cream Yellows, as I said, so we never know. Maybe those will actually sound good as hell, and maybe it'll be really good. And maybe you can buy one of these yourself and mod it up your own way, but I doubt it, and I absolutely doubt that I will ever recommend anyone buy this at the end of this video. <clears throat> Not to mention, it's going to take me like eight extra days to finish because of how long my cream yellows are going to take to ship. Alright, y'all, this is just a sped up clip of me doing the tape modding. Uh, I did figure out that the Echo Cream V3 yellows will 100% fit in this PCB, so it should work perfectly. It shouldn't break the keyboard or anything, so that's really nice. I hope it sounds good. And then also, I just want to say, I used to think that tape modding was a complete waste of time and it, like, didn't do anything. I tried it one time and I literally will never go back. Like, I tape mod every keyboard I ever build. So, if y'all are watching this, I highly recommend just start tape modding your keyboards, bro. It makes it sound, like, ten times better. A few days can actually fit in. I think it'll sound very, very good. Alright, now we gotta trim up the sides. Also, I don't know if you guys can just tell. I can, I don't know if you can. This is just a terrible, terrible PCB too. Everything about this keyboard is just awful. Now time for the screwdriver holes for the paint on. Are you serious? Personally, my least favorite part of the whole thing. Sometimes you can just press it down and it'll just work. But I do not think today is going to be one of those times. We will try. Oh, that's one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, and how many screws do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're missing two. Where are the two screws we are missing? One, two, three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll be a son of a bitch. That actually worked somehow. Let me see if I can maybe try to make some plate foam with this right here. I'm going to give it a try. 
and we'll resume the video when I'm done. Going to be completely honest, there's no way in hell I could get plate foam in here. So I think our only option at this point is just to set the plate back on. Which it is successfully on right now. Obviously I took the stabilizers out. So we're going to show you how I loop stabilizers. I am notoriously bad at clipping stabilizers. So we're not actually going to do that. Because I suck at it. <laughs> All right, here we're just still leaving the stabilizers, but then I did give kind of some insight on what I personally like to do on my stabilizers and my switches. I kind of just said, for stabilizers, my personal recommendation is always going to be to use dielectric grease, and for lubing switches, I'm always going to be doing 105GO for bag lubing the springs, donut dip the springs in 205GO, and then actually lube the switches in 205GO. I uh, just thought I'd want to let you guys know that because for me, it always makes my switches sound perfect. So, yeah. Alrighty, I got the stabilizers in now. I'm going to be honest with you, these stabilizers are definitely not good at all in any way, shape, form, or fathom. They're just fing terrible, I'm going to be honest. I'm not trying to cuss, but they are really fing bad. Uh, again, sorry for cussing. I just I really have to make it known those are like some of the worst stabilizers I've ever seen. Where did I put my screwdriver on it? As you can see, my desk is a little bit of a mess here. Now we are going to try to screw everything back on because the only step left is to insert switches, which we actually do not have at this moment. So we just have to insert everything back on. These Cherry MX Blue switches, as I told you, they all broke. They aren't really Cherry, I need to stop calling them that. So what we're going to do, because we hate them so much, is we're just going to throw every single one right in the trash can. Or if I get a comment on this video and you pay for shipping, I'll ship them to you. Straight up, I'll ship them, I'll ship them. Alright, so I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to sit here and I'm going to try to edit this video the best I can. And then when my switches come in a few days, I will add them on and continue editing and finishing this video for y'all. I hope it turns out good. I am really surprised it was actually hot swap. Literally could not believe it. It was just damn near astounded. Peace out for now. I'm going to go edit this. And when my new switches come, we're going to throw them on and do a sound test at the end. Peace. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what these are. They are the three pin switches that I ordered for our Majiji keyboard. It is the keyboard I got from Timu. Hopefully, we can make it sound a little bit better with some new switches and some new keycaps. Without further ado, I will let you guys watch me install every single switch here individually, because I know everyone loves that content. I am, of course, joking. Being the magician that I am, we're not going to do that. As you guys are thinking once again that the suave magician is used as magic to speed this video up for y'all, you're welcome. I know in the back of your mind, you're thinking you want to hear a sound test. Before we do that, though, we do need to apply the keycaps, unfortunately. I will, once again, be using my magic. Do not worry. Just as I said, y'all, use my magic to get this keyboard set up. The only bad thing about it is the interbar is kind of funky. I don't know if you can see it, like, popping up and down there. The stabilizers on the empty key are broken. Um, also, the space bar is backwards and it wouldn't go in forwards when I tried. I'll try again on screen. Besides that, it's not bad. So here's where I go. No spacebar foam, by the way. There it is. We can try again with enter. You can probably see. I don't know if you can see, but the stabilizers are really funky right now. I tried to like 
jam them in there. It didn't work. You can see it's this enter. Maybe if you try it backwards. Yeah, that definitely doesn't fix it. So it looks like the enter key is just going to be kind of jacked. So the enter key is messed up. So, so far it sounds a lot better than it did before. Let's do a sound test. Also, I low-key forgot about this until right now, but here is a comparison of um, before and after of the keyboard, before and after we modded it to make it better. Cue that now. So what do you guys think? We improve it or make it worse? Let me know if you enjoy this video. I can do more like this. Uh, I can also show sound tests of all my other keyboards or customize mod slash mod my other keyboards on my channel. If you guys enjoyed this, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe.